Learning Sir Duke is a rite of passage for any serious bass player, particularly the unison section. I was originally going to make this video about a number of Nathan Watts bass lines, but there are enough talking points in this song alone to warrant its own video. If you're new to this channel, then this is a series of videos where I analyse the bass lines of legendary bass players. And I point out things that you can use to make your own bass lines sound great. I always like to start out with something simple. So in the verse, we see the bass line navigating its way through the chords using mostly roots, fifths and octaves. Playing the fifth is a really safe bet when it comes to composing your bass lines. Apart from a few exceptions, including diminished and augmented chords, playing roots and fifths will work over almost all chords. They are also the most consonant note choices, so you can assure that they won't get in the way of the melody or the harmony. You can find them either above the root by going up one string and across two frets, or you can play them below the octave, which is directly below. But there is something else going on here. Have a listen, can you hear it? You may have noticed that there are some extra percussive notes in there. These are called muted notes, ghost notes, or sometimes dead notes. And they just give the line a bit of extra rhythmic interest. They are mostly used here to anticipate the strong beats. So if you play one just before the first beat, you get this effect. You can achieve this by resting the fretting hand on the strings without actually pressing the string down against the fret and pluck the string as normal. Here is a tip. Try and rest more than one finger against the string, otherwise you may end up with a harmonic instead of a mute. Sir Duke was written as a homage to Duke Ellington and other jazz legends, so the composition has many musical elements lifted from jazz. One of which is the swing feel. The bass sometimes plays a swing feel and sometimes plays a straight feel. The swing feel is a 16th note swing, which means that every 8th note is subdivided into 3 instead of 2. This gives it a very fast triplet feel. Another way of thinking about this is that the 16th notes have been pulled apart and are unevenly spaced. Listen to this and you'll hear what I mean. The great thing about playing a 16th note swing is that you can play either straight or swung. Like we've just seen with those muted notes, they were played swung, or you could play it straight, like this section. That last clip you heard was from the last chorus of the song and the bass at that point is starting to sound very busy. So if you ever get the opportunity to stretch out and really show off your chops, here's a really good suggestion. Do it like Nathan Watts did it in Sir Duke. He doesn't start off playing all those complex lines, he lets them develop and grow as the song progresses. Let's just compare the first chorus to the last. By holding back early on, you allow the music to become established in the listener's ear. And just by building more and more as you progress through the song, it will give the music some climactic tension. One of the musical devices that is used to create these more complex bass lines is called a chromatic approach note. This is another element that is used frequently in jazz and is a great way to add colour 
and tension to your bass lines. In fact, chroma is the Greek word for colour. To use a chromatic approach, you first need a target note. So let's use this example. The F minor 7 chord going to the E major 7 chord. We are going to move from one chord to the next. So the target note is the root of E major 7, E. And we are going to play that on the first beat of the second bar. Now we have our target note, we are going to play two notes above the E, leading up to the second bar. So we will play the F sharp and the F natural. The F belongs to the F minor 7, but the F sharp does not. So when played in isolation, this will cause a magnificent dissonance. Which is great for avant-garde, but maybe not for a pop song. If we play it in the context of our line, you will feel a brief moment of tension, followed by a satisfying resolution. And this is exactly what happens in Sir Duke. Listen again. And there you have it, five things that make Sir Duke sound great. And I didn't even talk about the unison section. If you found this video interesting or useful, then liking, commenting and subscribing would really help me out. Or you could just check out one of these videos.